Welcome to Weld.com. Today I'd like to introduce a process that a lot of viewers have requested and it's carbon arc gouging. A couple of things about carbon arc gouging. We use a constant current welding machine. Same thing as a stick welding power source. I'm going to use about 80 uh, PSI of air pressure. I'm going to use a quarter inch carbon arc electrode in a holder going to be running about 230 amps okay this process is just gouging out material we strike an arc we turn the air on we strike an arc and we are gouging out material we can do several things with carbon arc gouging it can be used for uh, procedures where we're getting full penetration we do a, a partial penetration weld on one side we turn it over we back gouge down to clean metal grind, clean, complete the weld. Another uh, process, procedure that we can do with it is to take parts, uh, separate parts, and save each part. So if we, let's say that we had something that we fabricated and it was dimensionally wrong or there was a mistake on the print, we should be able to take pieces uh, and separate them without destroying either part. So there's, there's a lot of things that carbon arc can be used for. There are four types of carbon arc electrodes <clears throat> pointed for the majority of work done manually. There is a hollow that puts out less particulate matter. There's a flat used for scarfing. And there's a jointed, and these would be used for continuous runs or automatic I'm going to get some personal gear on, my gloves, my hood. I am going to wear earplugs with this because this does put out a lot of noise. Uh, my machine back here does not have a, it's a continuous fan, so it's going to be kind of loud too. Again, I'm running on a constant current machine. I'm running on a Lincoln DC 400, about 230 amps. As you can hear, I have a little air coming out of here, out of this valve. And when I put the electrode in here, I only want about four inches, five inches sticking out. This will swivel so I can get in different, get different angles. Now what, I'm, what I want to do here, I have a piece of plate that has some chalk lines on it. And I simply, I simply want to lightly touch this and initiate an arc. And when I do, I want to glide down through here and try to follow that line. You know, granted, my slag, my sparks and everything are going to be shooting out here, but I still want to have some kind of a reference so I can go in a straight line. Okay, we did a couple of practice runs here and shot some B-roll. And in doing that, like, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. One of them is the noise factor. This is, this is really loud. And so I, I generally most always wear earplugs. Not a bad idea to wear a mask, although we do have air filtration and this is being shot into a kind of a collector over here so that we're not throwing sparks across the shop. So there's a couple of things we need to talk about. My machine is off so I can, I can uh, get this electrode holder down here without taking a chance of sparking up. As we stated earlier, I like to get this out about four inches or so. <clears throat> I've seen some people operate this and they just get right down in it. I am not one of those people that likes to get my face up in there. Matter of fact, I can, I, it seems like I can move better. I have a plate here so that I can slip my hand on. Generally the work you're, you're on, uh, you can rest your arm or your hand against this. But uh, some people say you lean this way over and we can experiment with different angles. We'll lay one way over here where we're up about 20 degrees. We'll come up about 30 degrees, which is my personal preference for con controlling the depth. And we'll get up here real steep, about 60 or 70 degrees, and we'll try a couple of runs that way. First angle we're gonna do is uh, my preferred angle up here about 30 degrees. And I wanna strike this. As soon as I get this arc established, I like to glide along. My, my travel speed is kind of my depth, so I just want to maintain this cut. This 
second angle, I want to get it. I want to get it down here low and experiment way down here, about 15, 20 degrees off horizontal. Surprisingly, about the same thing as far as depth. I didn't feel like I had control of the width as well when I had that angle. And this angle, we're going to go real steep and see what happens. I'll probably get burnt. Okay, we made numerous cuts across here, a couple of test runs. We did various angles, got different effects on depth and width. And uh, I chipped some slag off here. Surprisingly, you know, this piece of steel was not clean. The mill scale was not cleaned off of it. Uh, you can see that this built up over here, but in between each cut, if I would come in here and try to lift this off, I could probably get that off there quickly. Uh, items that I've used in the past to remove this heavy hard slag needle scaler. Uh, you can set a quarter inch wheel or an eighth inch wheel right next to the cut and kind of break that edge off. It has nothing. It's like, it's like working on a bevel. So you can remove it fairly easily. If you let it build up, then you got a lot of work ahead of you. So again, carbon arc gouging. This is just an introduction to, you know, the process itself. To recap, we're using a constant current machine. I ran off of a DC 400, about 230 amps, about 80, 85 PSI for my air pressure. I was running quarter inch pointed electrodes. And, uh, you know, it's pretty versatile. Uh, we're going to get into other methods and other uses of carbon arc. I hope you found this educational. If you found this content useful, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching Weld.com.